Hello, my name is Vivek Talhikar, and I'm a Solutions Architect for the Ixia Solutions Group under Keysight. In this video, I'll be demonstrating a very simple one-arm test case with Breaking Point to quantify the performance of a Linux-based web server. Breaking Point has the ability to emulate client and server traffic in a one-arm or a two-arm methodology to test various devices, systems, and or services. The diagram on the left describes Breaking Point's ability to test a device while emulating both arms of the topology which includes clients and servers, along with a blend of malicious and legitimate traffic. The diagram on the right is the one that we'll be focusing on for the following demonstration to emulate clients only towards a device that will be serving requests such as HTTP responses. The topology for this demonstration is fairly straightforward. I have the CloudStorm 10 gig load module in 10 gig breaking point mode connected to a top of the rack 10 gig switch, which is also connected to a bare metal server running the Linux operating system and the Nginx web server. I'll be utilizing Breaking Point to create a test from scratch, utilize an existing superflow called clients in HTTP, and that superflow is essentially an instantiation of the HTTP protocol to simulate clients, and in our case, it will be DHCP v4 clients. And we'll also be defining a conditional request to measure the successful number of 200 OK HTTP responses that we expect from the web server while it's capable of maintaining the increasing connection rates. So let's go ahead and create a new session in Breaking Point. The first step that I'll perform is I'll save this test. And I'll call it HTTP rate test. The first component that I'd like to configure within Breaking Point is a network neighborhood. And so to do that, we'll go to Control Center, click on New Network Neighborhood, and out of the options that are available here, I'll select Server, which is the one that's applicable for a one-arm test case, where we'll be simulating a subnet of 100 DSCP v4 clients going through a top-of-the-rack switch towards an external web server, which is also interconnected with the 10 gig switch. So let's use this one by clicking on Create. I'll call it NN HTTP rate test. The default components that this particular network neighborhood comes along with include interface, which defines the physical interface that it's mapped to, the MTU, MAC address, and other parameters, IPv4 router, but we will not be utilizing this for this test, so we'll remove this, external hosts, which is essentially pointing to the actual IP address of the web server itself. So this will be 192.168.1.1. And we'll leave it at its count of 1, because we'll only be testing one server. The tag that's associated with this is external default. We won't be using the static host section, so we're removing that and replacing it with the DHCP v4 pool. In order to do that, we can just add new element, proceed to endpoint, and IPv4 DHCP hosts. Now this needs to be configured to go through interface one. And for the tag, I will select I1 underscore default, and we want 100 DHCP v4 clients, an allocation rate of five per second. So let's save this, and go back. Now that we've created that network neighborhood, we can apply it to this particular workspace. So I found it here, and I'll click on Select. Let's go ahead and create the client simulation component itself. And modify it. So the client tags are correct. I1 default, and server tag is external default. For the superflow, we'll be locating an existing superflow called clientsim HTTP. And let's take a look at what's in that superflow. So we have the HTTP protocol defined, and it's destined towards port 80, which is essentially what we need here for a plain text transaction. And for the actions, we've got the get, and we need to rename this from index.html to one byte.html. 
HTML. And for the conditional request, which is already configured here, we see that there are three conditional requests defined. And we expect the one byte HTML page response to trigger this particular conditional request. As a result of that, it will finish that state machine and proceed to the next transaction. Just in case we get any redirects, we'll also be ignoring that by completing the transaction. If there are any failures, then it will be considered as a failed transaction. So let's save this as HTTP rate test. Since we've used a template and modified the values, we'll have to now locate that and apply it to this particular client simulation component. And for the load profile, rather than using a very simple ramp up, sustain, and ramp down profile, we'll be using a custom load profile, which I've created earlier. So I'll go to Custom and select Custom Load Profile and click on Select. This particular load profile is split into multiple phases. So the phase one is the instantiation of the test, which is one second in total. And the second phase, or phase one, will be three seconds in total, no bandwidth restrictions because it's 10 gig link, be 1,000 sessions per second. The next phase will be 2,000 sessions per second, 4,000, and so forth. It will peak until 32,000 and will proceed to ramp down from 32,000 towards back down to one session. So we can see that the custom load profile has been defined here. And we've got the custom superflow that we also modified from the template and we're ready to run the test. Before we run the test, we'll go to device status and make sure that we have at least one port selected. And that's all we need for this particular test. Let's save and run. As we can see, the DSCP v4 addresses have already been resolved, and the test is already testing 4,000 connections per second. Let's take a look at interface statistics. We see one interface, we see frames being shown and charted here. We see data rate as well. And we can already see some timeouts, and we'll take a look at that. So let's click on report and look at the details of the client simulation component and response summary. So we can see that for the 200 OK response conditional request, breaking point matched exactly 277,242 connections. If we proceed to flow rate, we'll see that the number of connections increased gradually peaked at 32,000 connections per second and gradually was ramped down over a period of time. Now to see where exactly the device was able to reach its peak performance, we'll proceed to application transaction rates. So as we can see here, it was able to handle connection rates up to 20,000 connections per second. So if we correlate this, we will see that 32,080 connections per second was achieved without any failures. So this concludes the demonstration of this breaking point one-arm test. I hope this was informative and thank you for your time.